Fantastic. Nobody has ever called me beautiful. This is Alan Dell now with our uh, fifth program in the BBC's Radio 2 dance season. And this evening, one of the most famous venues of good dance music ever, the Mayfair Hotel in London. You are listening to Ambrose and his orchestra playing a medley of tunes that were popular over the air. When Sam Brown made that introduction to a medley of hits, Ambrose and his orchestra had actually left the Mayfair for the Embassy Club, but it reflected the many broadcasts that the band made from the Mayfair, where Sam Brown acted both as compere and, of course, as the principal vocalist. There ought to be a moonlight saving time, so I could love that girl of mine, until the birdies wake and chime, good morning. There ought to be a law in clover time, to keep that moon out over time, to keep each lover's lane in rhyme till dawning. You'd better hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, get busy today. You'd better croon a tune, croon a tune to the man up in the moon, and here's what I'd say. There ought to be a moonlight saving time, so I could love that girl of mine, until the bird is wake and chime, good How did Ambrose get to have his band at uh, one of London's most prestigious venues, the Mayfair Hotel? Well, I remember the late Joe Crossman, whose alto sax, I think, it was in uh, Moonlight Saving Time, telling me how it happened. It was at the Embassy Club. As you know, the Embassy Club was the most exclusive club in the world. This was around about early 1927, I believe. Eventually, he... Uh, got this offer from Sir Francis Towle at the Mayfair Hotel at a very, very high salary, and uh, I was honoured to be the only member of that orchestra to join with him at the Mayfair. He much liked the baritone work, see, because he could play violin obligatos very nicely to that, and a nice contrast. Mm. And I remember that people used to crowd round the bandstand at uh, the Mayfair Hotel and admire the uh, music. And uh, Ambrose, I think he was a little jealous, you know, because they, this baritone sax was rather an odd instrument to these people in the early days. Mm. And he'd say, aha, sax appeal there. Eh? Certainly with much appeal at the Mayfair was the vocalist who shared songs with Sam Brown, Elsie Carlyle. With her slightly timorous voice, she gained a large and loyal following, as my request file bears witness to this very day. Somewhere the sun is shining, so honey don't you cry, we'll find a silver lining. The clouds will soon roll by I hear a robin singing Upon a treetop high To you and me he's singing The clouds 
heart will soon roll by. This little tear and sorrow only brings you closer to me. Just wait until tomorrow, what a happy day that will be. Down lovers lane together, we'll wonder you and I. Goodbye to stormy weather, the clouds will soon roll by. From the outset, Ambrose chose top musicians for his Mayfair Orchestra. They really read like a who's who. I can't name them all, but among the principals there were trumpeters Sylvester Hohler and Max Goldberg, later Harry Owen, trombonist Ted Heath and Tony Thorpe, saxophonist Joe Crossman, as we've heard, Danny Polo, world-class clarinetist, Joe Jeanette, Billy Amstel, violinists Eric Sidde and Reg Persklove, Joe Branley on guitar, Max Bacon drums, and there was pianist Bert Reed, who together with Lou Stone and uh, saxophonist Sid Phillips and others, wrote many of the band's arrangements, including one of the most famous in 1930, Body and Soul. My heart is sad and lonely I wait and cry for you, dear only I tell you I I'm all for you, body and soul. I spend my days in longing and wondering why it's me you're wronging. Why haven't you seen it? I'm all for you, body and soul. I can't believe it, it's hard to conceive it, that you turn away romance. Are you pretending? Don't say it's the ending. I wish I could have one more chance to prove here my life a hell you're making. Now oh, I'm yours for just the taking I gladly surrender Myself to you, body and soul This is the historic February 1930 red label Decca recording M402 Slightly abridged because this 10 inch 78 runs If I remember correctly, something around 4 minutes Bert Reed arranged it to feature, as you hear, Ambrose's own violin obligato to Sam Brown's vocal chorus. It remains a favorite in the vast Ambrose catalogue. Soul with Sam Brown. 
arranged, as I said, by pianist Bert Reed, who was uh, introduced to Ambrose by drummer Max Bacon, who emerged as one of the comedy personalities of the band, and in the character of Mr. Gimble, recorded this in April 1933. Hey, what's all this noise going on here? Why don't you know Mr. Ambrose? This is Mr. Gimble who plays the cymbal. Let me introduce you. Mr. Gimble, Mr. Ambrose. How do you do, Mr. Gimble? I'm all right, thank you, Governor. How are you? Ah, well, now you've made all this noise, let's hear what you can do. Music suits this savage heart, that's what we are taught. But you should see what music done to Mr. Gimble Gold. He once worked in a jazz band and what a red hot man. In hardy crowds would follow him, the pride of old East Ham. You heard from Sammy Cohen, what he plays on the saxophone. Well, Sammy Cohen comes saxophone till Gimble hits the cymbal. You heard in uh, Goopy Gear, what he plays the piano by ear. Well, Goopy Gear can't play by ear till Gimble hits the cymbal. Oi, this drama, what a drama, and he's dumber via plumber. But what a hit on the Brighton Pier in the spring and in the summer. You heard in uh, Piccolo Pete, what he plays the tweet, tweet, tweet. Well, Piccolo Pete comes tweet, tweet, tweet till Gimble hits the cymbal. piano by ear. Why, there's old Piccolo Pete. Come on, boy, let's see you tweet, tweet, tweet. That was recorded on the eve of Ambrose's departure from the Mayfair and his return to the Embassy Club, which of course began another chapter in the Ambrose story with all those wonderful Sid Phillips compositions and arrangements. At the Mayfair, the music was strictly for dancing, but played with such immaculate precision and taste that it was the envy of other musicians and the delight of society. Indeed, Amy himself underlined that fact that this was the golden age. We had the Prince of Wales, who was the leader of um, society. The golden age was everybody in, in the evenings, evening dress, full dress, jackets. There was, a, there was an atmosphere of grandeur about the whole thing. Well, I think it, it, it's a good description of that period. the end of the programme from the studio tonight and the London, Northern, Western and Scottish National programmes are closing down. 
Dance music comes from the Mayfair Hotel and will be played by Harry Roy and his band until midnight. It's just half past ten. Good night, everybody. You are listening to Harry Roy and his band playing their signature tune, Bugle for Rack. Bill Curry adopting the announcing role of Sam Brown before him. Apparently, there was some consternation in social circles when it was learned that Harry Roy was uh, taking over from Ambrose at the Mayfair. And it was uh, remarked on by the late Ivor Morton, of the famous duo of Ivor Morton and Dave Kay, when we talked, I guess it was some 20 years ago. You know, Bert Ambrose organ had a reputation for being sort of very uh, genteel sort of sound, very nice and quiet and conservative. And then when Harry Roy and his band went into the Mayfair, it blasted the walls apart. And I think Sir Francis Towle then, who was the head of the Gordon Hotel group, uh, couldn't believe his ears, uh, you know, and there were all sorts of messages going back and forth. <laughs> but apparently the customers enjoyed it so much, you know, that they insisted upon having it that way, and, uh, and it went that way from then on. <laughs> first recording that Harry Roy's orchestra made in the summer of 1933 after they took over at the Mayfair from Ambrose. 
The band was a hit because it was different, not least because of Harry's exuberance and uh, irreverent approach to the songs he sang, but also the band was full of personalities and good musicians. The two trumpets you heard then of uh, Bert Wilcox and uh, Tommy Porter, Nat Temple, Joe Arbiter and Harry Goss were the saxes, Morris Sterndale, the violinist, Ivor Morton and Dave Kay, the pianist, and I'm sorry my voice is going, <clears throat> Tommy Venn, the guitarist, Arthur Kalkin was on bass and Joe Daniels drums. Bill Curry acted as compere, percussionist and vocalist. The object of my affection can change my complexion from white to rosy red. Anytime she holds my hand and tells me that she's mine. There are many girls who can thrill me and some who can fill me with dreams of happiness. But I know I'll never rest until she says she's mine. Now I'm not afraid that she'll leave me. She's not the kind who'd be unfair. But instead I trust her implicitly. She can go where she wants to go, do what she wants to do, I won't care. The object of my affection can change my complexion from white to rosy red. Anytime she holds my hand and tells me that she's mine. affection with the vocal by Bill Curry. Oh dear, the old voice is terrible. Incidentally, Ivor Morton was uh, also an excellent singer of ballads, and he used to join in the fun with the vocal trios. But of course, his real fame came as one half of the piano duo team with uh, Dave Kay. Here they are, both of them, reminiscing again. Ted, who was a regular person to the hotel that day? was Eric Coates and his wife who used to love to dance as well. Another man was Pilkington. Remember Mr. Pilkington? Yes. He used to sit behind mm. us always. Yes. Why do you remember Mr. Pilkington? Because he gave us two glass mirrors for the front of our pianos. And you were yeah. having trouble with these things, you see, these mirrors that fitted where the, uh, the lid of the piano was. And the wall was breaking. And he said, I can't bear to see these cracked mirrors on your piano. He said, I have two specially made. And he had them made of this, what they call, armor plate you could hit with a hammer. Oh, we've seen some most marvellous things at the Mayfair in the old days. We, we used to do, a, a, what, an hour's broadcast from the Mayfair? Hour and a half. An hour and a half. That's perfectly right. It was during these broadcasts that Harry wanted to give the band a rest again. And he hit upon the idea of Dave and I, Joe Daniels on the drums and Arthur Carking on the, on the bass, doing, uh, what was it, Probably half an hour? Yes, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, just to give the band a rest. Okay. And this proved to be terribly popular. And that was the first start of the, uh, of, of, the, of the act of Dave and I with the string bass and drums. With the Tiger Ragamuffins. Which we ultimately took out, yes, the Tiger Ragamuffins. <laughs> Thank you. 
Morton and Dave Kay, Harry Roy's Tiger Ragamuffins in a little medley of uh, four tunes. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Happy Feet, Everybody Loves My Baby, and I Got Rhythm. And it's hard to believe that uh, Ivor Morton was a self-taught pianist, couldn't read music. He was the one who did all the twiddly bits. I don't know of an Ambrose Society, but there's a, a very active Harry Roy Society, and their next meeting takes place this coming Saturday at the Concert Artists Association, which is uh, 20 Bedford Street, that's uh, just off the Strand, near Charing Cross Station. Uh, 20 Bedford Street, just off the Strand, near Charing Cross. Concert Artists Association. And it starts at 2 p.m. Incidentally, the Society was founded in February 1973, exactly a year after Harry died. So, it's uh, 21 years old this year, and they have uh, something special planned for Saturday's meeting, so if you can, get along. Our special closing item is a great favourite with all Harry Roy fans. It's Shine. <laughs> of two great bands that played the Mayfair Hotel between the wars, Ambrose and Harry Roy. Next Monday, in our last program in this Radio 2 dance season, a brief recollection of the uh, Streatham Locarno and a larger one of the Hammersmith Palais. And in a few minutes, 